Good morning everyone, Stephen Lee here. Today is August 6, 2021's update, and in this video, I'll be talking about two things. First is the new SBA PPP direct forgiveness portal and some observations. And number two is the EIDL modification and the timing of when you can expect the modified funds to be deposited. Okay, so I have some great news here, so you wanna stick around for that. So let's get right into topic number one for today's update, and it's talking about the SBA's new PPP Direct Forgiveness Portal. You know, we process two clients round two or second draw PPP applications so far, and a few observations here. The first is, overall, the SBA did a great job with this portal. It started on time. We were able to process our first one on August 4th as they had advertised, so they did great there. And if you want an in-depth look at the portal and the various parts, I'll link that video in this video at the top and at the bottom in the information section. Uh, the second observation is all you need to begin after registering is your business tax ID, EIN, social security number, or ITIN, as well as the total PPP loan amount, or the SBA loan number. Okay, so you only need two pieces of information to actually get your application started once you've registered. So they made it very easy. The portal has secured um, the actual portal with two-factor authentication to increase security, which is always very important these days. Another observation, observation is once you've located your loan, the SBA pre-populates most of the information for you, which makes the process that much more convenient. So they've done a really good job once you're able to locate the, businesses, the business and the PPP loan associated with that business. Okay, one thing you wanna watch out for is when you're selecting the covered period. So one of the few sections where you actually have to uh, click and choose is what your covered period is gonna be. Remember, it's eight to 12 to 24 weeks. So there's three options here. There's an eight week, 24 week cover period or eight to 24 week cover period. Um, Please remember to refer to your payroll reports and forms, so like the 941, um, to make sure you cover your cover the cover period you select, whether it's eight or 24 or the eight to 24 weeks, had enough payroll to cover at least 60% of the PPP loan amount, right? Remember, that's the threshold to have your PPP loan forgiven completely, is to have at least spent 60% of the PPP funds uh, for payroll purposes, so make sure. So check those 941s um, to make sure that you know you had enough payroll during the cover period which you select um, to have that PP loan forgiven. Another item to watch out for is make sure you're not doubling up on the employee retention credit or the ERC eligible. Uh, payroll and the PPP related payroll. Remember, you can't use both of them for the same cover period, okay, or for the same employee. Okay, so for some companies, for some businesses, there's shareholders or the owners and there's employees, right? Our firm has taken the stance that the shareholder or the employer is not eligible for the ERC and only the employees are. So we've been doing the ERC credit for the employees but not the shareholder. So in those cases, uh, the cover period for the PPP loan forgiveness, we'd only use the shareholder payroll and not count the employee payroll. So be careful with that. Don't double up on the ERC and the PPP payroll for the same employees and shareholders, okay? Uh, number, the last observation here is um, the COVID revenue reduction score seems to be working well, really well. Okay, remember the COVID revenue reduction score is directly related to if you received a second draw or a second PPP loan, there was a 25% reduction in gross revenue eligibility test, right? We were all fearing and wondering how is the SBA going to um, verify or validate if there was a drop in gross revenue to qualify you uh, not only for the second draw PPP loan, but also qualify you for forgiveness for that loan, for the second draw. Remember, this is the second PVP, not the first PVP loan, but the second PVP loan if you've received. So this new COVID revenue reduction score, you know, um, when I refer to my last video, is really based on a few metrics here, right? You know, there's um, industry-specific metrics, geographical-specific metrics, foot traffic, all these different um, data analytics that the SBA seems to be using to qualify if a business um, and within that industry, within that geography, 
most likely had a revenue reduction, right? So um, one of our team members was mentioning that um, over the last few months, they've been receiving surveys from the Department of Labor, um, getting uh, data and information in regards to you know um, certain clients and certain industries. So I think the SBA is really pooling all of that information together to determine the COVID revenue reduction score for that business, right? To see did that business in that geography, in that industry, uh, most likely have a revenue reduction to qualify for the second drop PP loan. So it seems to be working really well. So if you're, if you fall into that case, right, then um, they do not ask for any further documentation or for you to upload anything to prove that there was a reduction in revenue for, for that PPP loan, which is great. So once again, overall, the SBA did a great job with this portal, and um, I hope it helped lessen the stress of having your PPP loans forgiven. Okay. okay, so remember, if these are the kinds of updates that you're looking for, uh, please remember to subscribe and click on that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the future updates. You know, I'd also love to hear more about where you are in your PPP direct forgiveness um, or uh, PPP uh, process of getting your loan forgiven, as well as what we're going to talk about next is the EIDL loan modification. Where are you in this process? Have you had your funds deposited to your account? Have you not? You know, are you coming up with any errors? You know, the the um, channel uh, subscribers have been really good about providing feedback for each other. So go ahead and place a comment in the in the comment section below. All right, so number two, let's talk about the EIDL modification and how one of our clients finally had the modification request approved and the funds deposited. Remember in my previous video, based on this one client that we're talking about, their loan modification was approved, officially approved, and the modified loan documents were e-signed and submitted on July 27th, which was a Tuesday, okay? So um, earlier last week in one of my videos, I talked about how, you know, great news, you know, official approval has been um, made for one of our clients and that was Tuesday, July 27th. So the loan modification was reviewed and signed by them and submitted Okay, on July 27th, Tuesday. So based on the client's bank records, the funds were actually deposited by the SBA on the following Monday, August 2nd. Okay, so the e-signed was sent in Tuesday, July 27th. The following Monday on August 2nd, the funds were actually deposited into the client's bank account. Remember, this is the modified EIDL loan funds, okay? So that, those funds were deposited. However, the client mentioned that the bank did not allow the funds to be used for two business days. So even though the funds were present on Monday, August, um, August 2nd, the funds were not able to be accessed or used for two whole business days. So the clients were made available on August 4th, which was a Wednesday, okay? So therefore, based on this client ex client's example, it seems like once the EIDL modification request is formally approved and all your modified loan documents are signed and submitted, it takes roughly two to three business days to have the funds deposited to the designated business account. And some banks may hold the funds for a one to two business days before the business can utilize or access the funds. You know, overall, this is great news because you remember on the loan modification document that I was talking about, um, there is explicitly a part where the SBA has listed that it can take up to six months for the funds to be deposited. So this is really good news to see that there's an exact actual example here where once the loan documents are submitted about a week um, within a week the funds are actually deposited that loan modification funds are deposited so that your business can actually access those funds to be used on working capital and other qualified eidl expenses um, lastly once again you know please leave some comments don't be shy in the section below i'd love to hear about where you are in the process and if we can help you and this community can help you with that modification process as well as the ppp direct forgiveness process as well until next time i wish you all a wonderful weekend and i'll see you next next week on one of my other videos or on my next Friday update. Till then, have a wonderful weekend. Bye.